The call to adventure brings Rick down to Venezuela, where an old friend, Juan Carlos, has a report of an unusual metallic blue tarantula. It was nice seeing you again, Juan Carlos. It's been, what, eight years now? Eight years since our Juan Carlos has invited Rick to join him on a journey to the remote Parawana Peninsula, a unique desert environment on Venezuela's Caribbean coast. It's a six hour drive before nightfall, so we've got to get going. Once again, lured away by the call of giant spiders, Rick heads south, crossing the mighty Orinoco River to visit an Indian village on the edge of the rainforest. We're going down to southern Venezuela to the Piero community. There's two species of tarantula here that are the monsters of the tarantula world. When they come up out of the ground for the first time and spread their legs, you think, when is it going to stop coming out of the ground? It's the exploration that's the most exciting part. Unfortunately, we both leave our wives behind, and uh, to me, that's great. <laughs> Driving into the very fringes of the Amazon rainforest, Rick and Juan Carlos are drawing ever closer to the home of the bird spiders, the world's largest tarantulas. Rick and Juan Carlos arrive at the Indian village. The Piaroa are an ancient people, deeply connected to this land. The Piaroa Indians are a very unique group of people that live in uh, central and southern Venezuela. And they still use blowguns to hunt. They still make fire, the old method, by rubbing two sticks together, for lack of a better word. It really is like going back into the Stone Age. For centuries, the Piaroa have walked these jungle trails hunting for animals with their blowguns. In a dry land where game is not that plentiful, monkeys or small birds will provide much needed sustenance. They're very cat-like. They have excellent acute hearing and eyesight and these fellows just slip through like shadows. It's, it's amazing to be with them and watch them hunt. When birds and monkeys disappear and pickings are slim, the Piaroa go after another kind of creature normally revered by the tribe, giant tarantulas. To these Venezuelan Indians, the spider is much more than a potential meal. Because it lives underground, they believe it is a messenger of the dead. Rick has been invited to watch this sacred ceremony as the shaman, using a snuff-like drug, communicates with his ancestors through the giant tarantula. The shaman in his own mind is asking questions of the spider. The spider is, in fact, obtaining the knowledge and information and the answer from the ancestors and from the spirit world and bringing that information to the shaman. It's emotional. They trust me. They've brought me into their culture and they've shown me something that has taken place for thousands of years. The next morning, the group heads out on a journey to an ancient burial cave where the Indians will eat the giant tarantulas they have caught. To get there, they must pass over a brutally hot landscape to the valley of their ancestors. I don't know how these guys can stand it in their bare feet. This rock is about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Unbelievable. Rock paintings, thousands of years old, decorate the walls of the burial cave. 
Eating the spiders here, in the presence of their dead ancestors, suggests the great reverence the Piaroa have for these tarantulas. This is a very sacred place that they brought me to, to uh, eat these tarantulas. I mean, that's bizarre enough. It's too much to take in in one day. It really is. This is their culture. This is their way of life. This is what they've done for thousands of years. And uh, when they offer you a tarantula to eat, um, it's like eating maybe your pet dog or something. I'm going to have to do it because I don't want to offend the uh, chief or the shaman. You can see the meat is nice and white. And although this may appear to be disgusting, it would be no different than if I had friends over up on the coast and had them over for a crab feed. Put some chill down my back, I'll tell mm. you. Tarantulas have a high percent of protein per body weight. They're probably one of the most highly nutritious food items in the rainforest. Are you ready for this? After you, my friend. Thanks. Gracias. So, here goes nothing. Actually, it's not bad. It tastes sort of like prawn meat if you get past the little smoky barbecue flavor. The only thing I miss is barbecue sauce. Not bad at all. Gracias. Now I understand that this is the final process to the tarantula meal. These are the fangs. As you can see, they're about half inch. At least. And we use them as toothpicks. And they work very well. I feel like I have a commonality with Piaroa. They study tarantulas in a spiritual way. I study tarantulas in a scientific way. And I truly hope that they are able to hang on to their identity and continue on in their culture. Oh. I've got to stop eating tarantulas. Who knows, if enough people get to handle them, maybe one day they won't be quite so frightened by the eight-legged hairy monsters of the...